to the House Republican press conference. Today is day 87. On the floor today, we're going to talk about a task force and nothing else. Um, seems a little odd to me that we're three days from adjournment mm -hmm. and um, we're having a one uh, resolution on the floor today. But uh, kind of the theme of this session for me has been uh, a lot of confusion on uh, how to lead. Uh, working on issues uh, without compromise. Uh, just to mention a few things, we've had two bills out there addressing the fiscal plan, uh, one from Representative Pruitt and one from Representative Wilson, still waiting to have a hearing. Those bills were introduced uh, March 22nd and March 20th. Uh, we haven't had uh, any movement. Both of those bills have been requested to hear. Uh, I think the theme of this session for the House Democrat Coalition is uh, my way or no way. And that's a little unfortunate for me. Uh, we, had, again, say it again, I've been optimistic working with the Democrat Coalition that we would um, have our uh, views heard, our policies looked into. Uh, none of our amendments have been, uh, that we've offered have been instituted or incorporated in any of the legislation that you see coming forward. That's unfortunate. Uh, then yesterday we saw the unfortunate of uh, the conditional language in a bill where uh, not only does our caucus come out it was pretty firm about a broad-based income tax, that we were opposed to that. Uh, they also tied the oil and gas tax credit and SB1, SB21 rewrite, which I like to call baby aces, uh, into, the, uh, into the percentage of market value bill. Unfortunate, it shows to me that uh, uh, when they go to negotiate, it's a lot of um, uh, you know, throwing, throwing rocks and stones but not getting anywhere close to a compromise or being uh, able to negotiate with the Senate or with the House Republicans. So a un little unfortunate, we're, we're still marshalling forward. We have, still have great ideas. We have three days left. Uh, we are um, working hard to get our members' philosophies and bills through this, the process and we'll keep working on that. Obviously, uh, told all of our members to secure some housing. We're going to be here for a little while due to the coalition's um, uh, procedures and policies that they put in place will probably be an extended long session uh, because of those things. With that, Representative Chenault. Thank you, Ms. Majority Leader, uh, or Minority Leader. Uh, as you stated earlier, it's day 87. Uh, we still haven't picked uh, conference committee folks. The only job that we have to complete in a timely manner in Juneau is the operating budget and the mental health budget. We do not have, at this point in time, we don't know who the uh, conferees are, uh, not only the majority members, but uh, also our minority member. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's caused us some concern uh, on trying to address when we're going to be out of here. Uh, we've never, I've never personally, I've never seen a, a conference committee uh, this late into the session in order to uh, uh, be picked. And we talk about, uh, you know, there was a press release out yesterday, and I, and I won't go th into it or through it, but uh, already blaming people for something that is or isn't in uh, one of the uh, conferenceable bills. Um, We had a uh, piece in the or in a press release uh, pointing out individual members who thought that uh, uh, maybe one version of the bill was uh, different than the other version. I, I hate to tell people this, but uh, uh, we're at a three billion dollar deficit, and how do we how do we fix that? Some think that. Uh, we just uh, institute new taxes and we charge Alaskans more. Some think that uh, we can continue to try to put downward pressure on the budget and actually come up with a, a better plan for Alaska. So uh, we won't know that until and if we get to a conference committee where uh, folks on the committee can determine which uh, which pieces of each one of those budgets we need to move forward. So as we, as we go through this, uh, there's going to be a lot of standing around. People are going to be, uh, uh, there's going to be uh, just a few people on the conference committee. And they're going to make the determinations on uh, how, how best to move forward. 
Uh, we're waiting on that. A uh, number of bills that have been passed this last week caused me grave concern for the private sector. I do care about the public sector. I do care about state employees. But I also care about the men and women that work around this state uh, and try to provide for their families in order to uh, uh, make a living and, and take care of their families. So, Madam Chairman, I'll, uh, I'll stop now, and I'm sure there will be a lot of other questions that come up. Thank you, Minority Leader. Um, the events of the last couple of days make clear to me a couple of important things. It just doesn't seem that the Democrats in charge in the House have confidence in their policies or believe they have the support of Alaskans in general in supporting them. You know, the most significant bills, the POMV, the income tax, the oil taxes, only come out of committee at the last minute and only after frantic significant changes. Uh, bills are passing on narrow caucus line votes and it's never quite clear which of their members will have to vote yes and which one of them will get a buy on the unpopular decisions. And they're using the desperate tactic of propping up some bills by tying them to other bills. That just shows me they don't have the support, they are flailing, and they're trying to blame others, which is very unfortunate. Representative Pratt? Yeah, thank you, Representative Millett. Uh, you know, I talked to a couple of our members yesterday after we were through on the floor. And, uh, and they, f they basically described it as they felt like they got punched in the gut. And, um, you know, th the idea that s there are people out there that can get behind one of the cornerstone pillars of trying to address our challenge. But the fact that you would say if you want to address the challenge, you have to support these other issues out there that can have an even larger damaging effect, that uh, I, I, it makes you feel dirty. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a quid pro quo. I mean, everything that we, uh, the ethical challenges that we always discuss and, and trying to elevate ourselves above these things, we yesterday had on the floor, in our face, one of the most dirty and unethical things that I've ever seen. And that is to say that if you want to be a part of fixing this, the uh, Alaska's challenges, if you want to support one of the cornerstones of that challenge and getting us through this, well, you, you're going to have to support these other things that would add on to the damaging and difficult challenges that our ec economy in Alaska is going through right now. And so there's a reason people felt like they got f punched in the gut yesterday. And there is no reason that that should have happened. And I'll add on to that, that this was, that was the 86th day. It was the 86th day and we're dealing with this. There's no intent to be done in, in the 90-day session. There's no intent to, to, no one, apparently someone's tone deaf because a lot of Alaskans told me last year they were ready for us to do our job in the right amount of time. And when you can't work on the one thing that we can all come together on and you intend to stand here, uh, stick around here for a while, you are tone deaf and haven't listened to what Alaskans have said. So with that. I'm sure there are questions. Thank you. Um, Grace Abbott will be here. Uh, I want to just briefly say congratulations to Mallory Walser. She had a baby boy. Uh, her and her baby boy are doing very well, and they have a family of four now. And so we just want to say we miss you and we wish you well while you're recuperating from childbirth. Wow. Becky Burr with the Associated Press. There had been a willingness among um, House Republicans last year um, and even heading into this session to um, to look at revenue, um, to, you know, see uh, how to fix it, fill the hole in a combination with cuts. Uh, so I guess has something changed or is there just a fundamental disagreement with how the majority is moving ahead with the process? Thanks, Becky, for the question. So last year, I think uh, Governor Walker introduced uh, maybe six or seven measures of taxes, a fish tax, a mining tax, a motor fuel tax. Um, oil and gas tax credits, sin taxes. Uh, last year, you know, we did have uh, time to take up those measures and look at them. Uh, this year, the only measure that we've seen the House uh, Democrats really want to look at or take up are two, which are an income tax, which uh, we've come out and haven't changed our position that uh, we don't think the size of government right now uh, without without reducing or streamlining government that we can uh, support a broad-based income tax like that, that really hurts the middle income. One of the things we heard on the floor yesterday was, uh, while, I, while I appreciate uh, Representative Chenault talking about public employees, I absolutely appreciate the service that they provide for the state. Not one member got up and, of their members of the Democrat coalition got up and talked about the private sector. 
what this does to the private sector, what an income tax does to the private sector, what an oil and gas tax rewrite does to the private sector. It was all mostly about protecting state government. Um, unfortunately, in the economy and the times that we have, everybody's going to feel the pain and everybody is going to feel the pain. Uh, the private sector is mainly feeling the pain right now. Uh, and so we stand by that we're ready to talk about things that won't hurt the private sector, but an income tax, in our view, is not the way to go, especially when we offered, you know, 300 great ideas on how to reduce the size of government without hurting health and safety, and they were all turned down. So at this point in time, um, there's no conversation with, with the House Democrats. There's none. It's uh, really their policies, uh, their procedures, and their way of doing things. And unfortunately, the Alaska economy is going to be the one that suffers. Anybody else? Um, the only thing I would add to that is, uh, in my seven years, I've learned, if there's one thing that I've learned about the legislature, it's this, that we really stink at doing more than one thing at a time. <laughs> And here we had actually come on one issue where I think we had gotten close to being able to complete that one issue. But yet they said, no, 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 let's throw a couple more things onto it. And so that's, that's uh, we are willing to talk about revenues. I think that's, the, that's what was really challenging about yesterday, mm -hmm. is I think there, was, there were people, and I, I don't want to speak for our whole caucus, there were definitely some people that would have been challenged if, if SB 26 had looked exactly like what the Senate has sent over, they, they wouldn't have voted for it. And, and you know what? They're representing their, their constituents, and I, I, I don't belittle that. But there are people in our caucus that probably would have joined with that. Well, not probably. There, there are that so would have joined. And so I think we had come to a place where we had come to a conclusion. But instead of focusing on that one issue, they decided to add other things to it and add on to it. And so I think it just shows the um, inability to manage by the current majority. Because when you are a manager, you recognize the strengths of the people that are you, are, you are leading, and you lead with those strengths. And they didn't. Instead, they decided to go and add things to it, and that's why yesterday there was that failure yesterday, and I think that's why Alaskans were done a disservice by what was on the floor yesterday. Can I just briefly, uh, last year in finance, I was in finance, one of the votes no to not allow a POMV bill to come before the, uh, before the House, and, and that was because my constituents had told me, um, we need to cut the budget more. And I had every expectation of coming back and being in a position to affect the budget in a downward pressure motion instead of the upward pressure we've seen this way. So uh, we were ready to take that step if with our condition of lower government was uh, achieved. That hasn't been. It's going the wrong direction now. So that's a factor you have to consider. Austin Baird from KTU. Is, is it acceptable to have this year end and not have a POMV in place? Uh, thanks, Austin, for the question. Yeah, I think I think the Representative Pruitt talked about that. I mean, there's some members of our caucus. Obviously, we have um, introduced a House Bill 192, which incorporates a, a percentage of market value into that legislation. You have lots of our members that have signed on to it. Alternatively, we have uh, Representative Wilson, and she um, has introduced House Bill 187, which is basically the 50-50 plan. You have members signing on to that. So there um, there should be something, some mechanism in place that's a clean bill that can offer Alaskans uh, the opportunity to see that we are willing to, to make those tough decisions like we heard on the floor yesterday. Yeah, these are tough decisions. And you make it 10 times more difficult uh, when you add con conditional language that if you do this, you must do that. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that Alaska could have come out and seen that the legislature can actually compromise and work together and not having a clean percentage of market value bill out there is definitely an, a lost opportunity and unfortunate. Go ahead, go ahead to that. I just, want to, I just want to say yes, the question of POMV, you know, my, 